everyone, this is Carla with Carla K Art. Um, thanks for tuning into my channel. Um, today I'm doing a Dutch pour on a black background, and I've already applied the base paint. Um, it's still a little bit thin on the edges, um, and I'm kind of letting it settle. Um, some people call this the pillow paint, I guess. I'm new to this medium, so I'm just kind of learning how it works. Um, I've already done a couple earlier today. So this is my third one, and I the other ones were square, so this one's a little rectangle. This is 10 by 20, and this is a Michaels canvas. Um, they're having their packs of canvases on sale this week, um, and so I got a couple of packs. Um, I've been trying to do mostly, I've, I've used up some of the canvases that I had that were older, um, and I've even repurposed a couple of canvases, so I, they were paintings, and I... Um, put primer over the top of them, gesso them, and then went ahead and redid them with um, this type of acrylic pores. I'm just really loving this medium. Um, if you know anything about me, you know I actually specialize in hand-painted silk, but I was looking for a second medium to kind of off-balance that because um, I didn't want to get burned out on the silk. Um, and so I decided to do these liquid pores after seeing a couple of um, videos on YouTube, and I am just totally in love with this. This is like the best thing ever. Um, very relaxing for me. So um, with these black backgrounds, I've done, I've done mostly white. Um, so today is the first day I've really concentrated on doing some of these black backgrounds um, versus a white background. The black backgrounds, you have to um, be careful because the paint tends to want to dive under. And when it dives under, you can't see it anymore. So um, the first one I did, you could barely see the color in. So the ones that I'm doing today, I am being a little more bold with my color and um, certainly not blowing because you use a hairdryer in this process and I'm not blowing as long so that I don't give the black a chance to mingle with the colors because I want the colors to sit on the surface. So I'm using um, my go-to paint is Liquitex. No, I'm not sponsored by Liquitex. That's just what I've used since I was in college. The professor used it, so he had us buy it, and now that's what I use all the time. But um, I also have some Artist Loft that has some glitter in it, um, or it's shiny. Um, the Artist Loft has some, the, the colors are pretty impressive. They're already liquidy, which makes them nice for this medium because they blend really easily with the leveling agent that you add to dilute your dyes depending on what type of paint conditioner, paint leveling agent you use. Um, so they, they don't um, lump up very often. They stay well blended. Um, and then for the glitter, for the real, the true glitter, the true marble on these black pieces, I think, is this gold glitter that I'm using, this gold uh, metallic paint. And this is by Lumi Air, which is by Jacquard. It's actually, I'm intended to use to be painted on fabric. Um, in fact, they used to have a really cool piece of, of painted feather necklace. If any of you have art backgrounds, you might have remember seeing that. It was in a couple of um, fashion magazines for a while, too. It was just beautiful, this big painted feather piece. Um, and I've actually added some of the leveler just to the inside of this because I really like this gold and I almost used it up. But I have a bunch of other metallic linear colors that I should use up before I um, um, buy more. And this is Lumiere, L-U-M-I-E-R-E. -E. And again, it's by Jacquard. Jacquard is also Rupert Gibbon and Spider, um, if you're looking for the company name. Okay, so I've got these on here. Um, some people add another cushion of paint, you know, black, on the edge of this whole piece. I don't do that. Um, or at least I'm not doing that right now. I've done it on a couple of my pieces, but I, I haven't seen a really big difference in the way I work with adding that and not adding it. So, um, and this is just paint with a leveling agent. Um, you can add silicone and some different things. I've even seen people add Elmer's glue. And I've seen people um, just add water instead of the leveling agent. But um, some of those things, the glue and the silicone can affect how the resin goes on over the top at the end after this is all dry and um, I really like the way the resin looks so I haven't tried that out yet. Resin is expensive so that's going to be like an expensive um, 
uh, investigation when I decide to look into that. Um, but at this point, I'm going to go ahead and add the hot air and the hair dryer and blow this out to make a design. Let's see what we get. Oops. I've learned about this medium is that you kind of have like one shot at it and if it doesn't turn out the way you want you can scrape the paint off of that area and redo that one particular area but if you keep blowing back and forth you'll, you'll lose all the cell action and the colors will blend together and the colors will definitely dive under the black and you won't be able to see them so you have to be patient kind of let the piece appear um, I'm not so fond of that big black area there I want something to happen there but the cell action, the circles and whatnot I'm getting out here are just lovely. It almost looks like the tail fin of a mermaid or something. Um, I'm going to be adding more gold. Just because I like the way it looks on this black because it just sits on the surface. And so I'm going to go ahead and take advantage of my gold to fill in a couple of these black areas that make me a little nervous. And, uh, Open this. And as this gold sits on the black, the leveling agent will um, spread it out or make it dive under as well. So you kind of have to watch it for a second to see how it's going to react. You can also use this to cover up any bare spots. Only because the black paint that I was using earlier today, I got some black on that was really thin and some of it still remains in the bottle so I'm just gonna let this kind of settle and see what happens with it gosh it's pretty oh we're getting all that cell action on its own so I didn't have to worry about it so um this type of art form really depends on you having your piece level and when I initially started it people had said it had to be level so I had it level where I was working which was great Except that when I was done painting it, I moved it to another place to dry. And when I did that, it wasn't level where it was drying and half of the picture slid off the edge. The piece still ended up being good. In fact, um, someone fell in love with it and has purchased it, which is great for me. But if you want the piece to remain looking the way it did after you paint it, make sure that wherever you're drying it is completely level. Because these leveling agents, this paint is a little over a quarter of an inch thick in places and it's going to continue to move around for a while. So, um, and you elevate it. I have it on some pins here. Some people put tape on the back of their canvas to, um, you can grab it here a little bit to kind of play with it a little bit. Um, some people put tape on the back, but I didn't find the tape helpful. Maybe I'm just messier than most people, but I still got paint on both sides of the tape. So the tape didn't really help me out. And when the paint stuck to the tape, when I pulled the tape off, it pulled on the paint, pulled some of the paint off, just off the back. But you can imagine that could have just as easily pulled off the front. I don't want that whole line there. I did that, and then in retrospect, I was thinking, mm -hmm. maybe I shouldn't have. Some of it's already fallen off. Yay! Because right now, my table is a little bit this way. So um, I think I'm just going to leave this as is. I'm going to move it over to the level area. So that it can move around more on its own without me affecting it. And we'll see what we get. Gosh, it looks like an undersea creature. I love all those pictures, all those undersea TV shows and the Facebook and the Instagram pictures I get. Um, Paul Nicken is one of the artists that I just so love. I follow his work. It's just so beautiful. But this, this piece is gorgeous. If you like this video, press the thumbs up button. If you want to get notified whenever I put out a new video, press subscribe. It's free to subscribe. It just allows you to get notifications. And um, if you want to learn more about me and my business, press the down arrow. There's links to my website. 
and things like that. And if you're interested in purchasing, just text me, email me, carlakart at gmail.com. Or, you know, text me. I'm on Facebook. I have a Facebook page, Carla K. Art. K-A-R-L-A-K-A-Y-K-R-T. Thanks for watching. Bye for now. I did these for today, practicing on the back background, trying to get the paints to show up more. Oh, these are so lovely. I really like the way these came out. Just beautiful.